How do you feel about one million dollars going to educate a small, somewhat select group of children that do not appear to be from the suffering or destitute? How do you feel about one million dollars going to educate a small, somewhat select group of children that do not appear to be from the suffering or destitution. What do you think? This school, Oak Grove School, as far as I understand, has a scholarship fund for poorer people, for the so-called destitute, for children who are not from the well-to-do class. I wonder why there is a general antagonism or feeling against a group of people who are elite. And why do we object to a school of this kind, which has really a scholarship? Why do you object to it? Not knowing all the intricacies of the school, the problems of the school, and so on. And why don't you, if I may point out, object to the enormous sums of money being spent on war. Why don't you object to that? War, not in a particular war, nuclear war, but the whole idea of killing people for one's country. Why do, isn't that much more important to object to that than to this? This is also important, and we have replied to it. That is, this school, Oak Grove School, they are spending your money, a million dollars, if they can get it. I think they will get at least half of it. Having a secondary school. And there is a scholarship fund for those who cannot possibly afford the full pay. If you feel this strongly, then what will you do about it? Burn up the place? Or go into the question, why in an affluent society as in America, as in this country, as in this part of the world, why there are people who are starving who are very little, who are uneducated, who are submit to, submitting to all kinds of horrors. Why this country is spending millions and millions and millions on armament and so on? Why? Do we object merely verbally or do we take action about all this? And what can one do when a country, like all over the world, even the most primitive societies in the, in the world, are accumulating materials for war. Each country, like France, England, America and other countries, are spending, are selling armaments to other countries, poorer countries, who are also spending millions on all kinds of horrible means of destruction of humanity. What do, what do we feel about all this? I 
And what can one do about all this? It seems almost impossible to stop this destruction of man. So, do we go to the root of all this? Or merely consider not to have certain type of nuclear bombs and so on, superficially? Or do we go into all these matters deeply? That is the core, what is the cause of all this? What is the cause of poverty, not only in this country, which is so affluent compared to the rest of the world? What do we do about it? When you go to the Asiatic world, India and so on, the population is increasing every year. In India, 15 or 13 million people are added every year. And a very, very poor country like that is spending billions on armaments, buying Mirage from France to oppose another country, neighbour. We're all doing this. What shall we do? What is the cause of all this? Destitution, poverty, orphans. In the Asiatic world, people have starved, are starving. The speaker was part of it. Not enough food and so on, as a boy, as a child. So we all know what poverty is, perhaps not you. I'm glad you don't know it. And what is the core, what is the root of all this? Is it National pride? Is it some kind of peculiar honour to fight for one's own country and kill millions of people in that for that honour? What is the cause of this? destitution, the increasing poverty in the world? Is it that the nationalism has divided people and therefore one country is enormously well-to-do, the other countries are not? Is it possible to have a global relationship, interrelationship, so that economically, socially, as politics, everything is a global problem, not American problem, an Asiatic problem. Can we consider that to stop wars, which is part of destitution, part of this enormous destruction of another human being, who is like you. You may call himself a Turk, or an Argentine, or a British, or a Russian, but that human being is like you and me, going through all kinds of misery, hoping for security in nationalism, 
which is isolation. And in that isolation there is no security. So could we or some group of people be free of all nationalism? Who are absolutely, totally against war, killing other human beings. I am not telling you to do it, please. There were in ancient societies a group of people who refused to kill under all circumstances. It was their religious deep conviction that to kill was evil, and if you kill you would pay for it next life. Therefore don't kill. Reward and punishment, maybe. But the idea of killing something, because life is sacred. So how? If one feels that deeply, one puts aside all tribalism and can governments in the world not accumulate armaments? Seems almost impossible. The world has gone insane. If you don't pay tax, you are sent to prison because you are an objector to all this. And if you buy a stamp, you are sustaining war. If you pay for petrol or gas, it's called in this country. Part of it goes to war. So, seeing all this, what is the what is a human being to do, not only in this school, it's a small affair. What is a human being confronting with all these problems, what is he to do? Who is responsible for all this? Governments? Politicians? The group of terribly rich people? Or controlling governments, big corporations. <coughs> Who is responsible for all this? Hara. Please answer these questions. Isn't each one of us responsible? Because we dislike or a foreigner. hate people who are not of the same colour as we are, and so on. Aren't each one of us, isn't each one of us responsible for all this? <coughs> so, if we are responsible, it's our duty, our, resp- our intense feeling that will bring about a new society, a new group of people. That's the function of education. At least we are, that we are trying in the school to bring about good human beings. Yeah, whether they are rich or poor, that is, children or children. Good integrated, honest human beings. They may fail, but it's good to attempt to do something of that kind. So it's our responsibility, it seems to us, that each one of us deeply understands this enormous problem for which 
Each one of us is responsible. You have heard the speaker saying all this. He has said it all over India, Europe, in this country, in Australia and so on. You listen to all this. And apparently we don't seem to apply it. And that is really the most terrible thing to do. If you hear something that is true and not apply it, it acts as a poison. You understand? It, it, it's a very destructive thing to hear something true, natural, healthy, and not profoundly apply it. Then what you have heard and what you are what you are brings about a contradiction and then there is conflict, perpetual conflict. Be far better not to hear any of this. And not apply. The speaker has a passport, an Indian passport, diplomatic passport. But that paper does not identify himself with the country. That paper is merely for the convenience of travelling. 